Okay, so uh, good afternoon. I am Anto Budiarjo. Welcome to Monday Live. This is something that we do uh, on uh, Monday afternoons to figure out what the future is like uh, for smart buildings or smarter buildings. So uh, great to have you with us um, this week. Um, we are listed on mondaylive.org in case you're wondering who we are. Um, and uh, also just the point that the views expressed here are personal, not of any company or organization. So remember that. Uh, and uh, we do um, uh, find that it's much more um, interactive and, and sort of engaging if, uh, if we all um, engage on the chat. So uh, please, please do that. And if you want any of the links or any of the information that I'm presenting here on this slide deck, it is also available on Monday Live. Dot org. So head over there. Um, so this being uh, January, we've been um, obviously revolving the theme around AHR before uh, uh, the AHR itself. We were focused on the Smarter Summit and the AHR, and that's all passed. So uh, what we want to do uh, today is to do a bit of a recap of AHR and the ASHRAE meeting. Um, so uh, normal agenda, just normal chit chat first, and then uh, talking about um, uh, what happened at HR and uh, just opening it up for discussion. So that's the, the what we're going to do today. Um, and uh, as always, going to hand it over to um, Ken Sinclair. Um, and Ken Sinclair has a companion today. So um, please, Ken, please uh, introduce uh, your your fine companion. <laughs> okay, as we were just talking before the show, we we're this is us scaling, so we've done a hundred percent scale of uh, what's going on here. Uh, this is my daughter Carrie Sinclair. Uh, she came to Chicago with us, and uh, she's part of our new editorial board. She's the chairman of our new editorial board, and the rest of our editorial editorial board is uh, there: Brad White uh, and Scott Cochran. I think you most people on this call know know both of those people. Uh, the exciting news is uh, Carrie's carrying on the torch uh, as uh, she's been uh, using using the words uh, "when I fall off the perch," <laughs> which I think is a great definition of uh, of my journey. Uh, and uh, so, when I fall off the perch, uh, the editorial board will uh, will carry <laughs> on the flag of automated buildings and. Uh, Carrie will uh, will basically do that. Uh, we had a really great uh, showing. Cochrane did an amazing job for us in Chicago. They uh, the the uh, sessions were great. Uh, the two on the bottom that have featured the AI one. Uh, we not only had a full room, we had a full hallway. We we. Need, the only they kept shutting us down because of fire kind of thing. They said we can't let any more people in there because of a fire code and some codes and stuff. So but anyway, we snuck in, but uh uh the other ones were pretty full. The uh, cloud native one was well received. So I think that points out that the the stuff we're talking about in Monday Live is very current and and real. The other problem we have is uh, my youngest daughter is involved with the company as well as a brand manager. And uh, of course, Carrie Kelly, uh, everybody says that. I met you at a, at a haystack meeting and uh, no, that wasn't me. That was my younger sister. So we we're got the whole family involved in the project here. Uh, we're looking forward uh, to that. I'm gonna let Carrie just introduce herself. And I think we kind of rediscovered each other that her roots, a lot of her roots and my roots uh, of automated buildings kind of came together in the early stages when she was doing a bunch of startups in San Francisco. We used to meet in San Francisco, San Francisco because it was halfway between Canada and Australia. So uh, let me just tell them a little bit about your journey. Um, thanks. Um, I know I met quite a few of you at uh, AHR, so nice to see the faces again. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, dad's already sort of done it, except for um, being his daughter. I um, I have also had a, a long career in in some of the stuff that you guys are starting to explore. But I guess the early days of the Internet, um, as well as um, my own startup, which um, I started at the same time, dad started automated buildings. So we've kind of gone through the startup journey together and then um, have continued into um, uh, from software, basically a software background, Internet background. 
all the way through now into emerging things like additive manufacturing and some of the other themes that are going to start impacting um, building automation and, and some of how we keep these wonderful things running. Um, so yeah, uh, it was great to be there, get reconnected, um, uh, very keen to, um, you know, continue to obviously have dad have his voice and continue. Um, but we started to realize that um, with some of the, the um, focus and, and opportunities moving forward, we needed to show everyone that automated buildings was going to continue for another 25 years. So it was great to be Great to recognize where we've been um, from 1999 to this year, um, but also where we can go in the future, um, allowing uh, dad to obviously continue writing and um, giving his unique um, point of view uh, with sort of, as we say, scaling it to allow um, other people to help, um, you know, make sure, I guess my role as chair is really to protect the legacy of what dad has wanted to be, which is an independent open thought, you know, community library where everybody has a voice and, and we can, um, you know, not be bought out <laughs> and sold to somebody for, uh, for a dollar um, and um, keep all of you wonderful people um, together with us. So that's all I wanted to say. Good. Sounds good. Thanks, um, yeah. Anyway, I want to compliment uh, you guys on putting together your smart summit uh, video, which we have over on the, uh, the left there, good job. I loved her comment about the old folks that are finally getting out of the way. So uh, we support getting those old folks out of the way. The only other thing I wanted to uh, point out is this is the start of the editorial, uh, our editorial group, or, but we kind of see that that will evolve. And as we need to have different people involved in the control, we will probably do that. So I think we, this is the start of the structure. And uh, Carrie has super skills in organizing and buying and selling companies. And, and I think she'll be very useful in uh, making them happen. So she's, she's not just a pretty face. Back to you, Anto. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. And uh, thanks, Carrie. And welcome to, to this community. And you're obviously welcome to join us um, on Monday Live, although I don't think time zones uh, is very uh, conducive for that. It's okay now. It's in, It's when you guys go into winter, it gets a little hairy. It's about 5 a.m., 4 a.m. my time um, yeah. in the winter. But in the summer, it's 7 a.m., so that's fine. Okay. Well, we're, we're um, happy to have you. And I just counted around the screen. There are actually more of us from um, the the... the the British Commonwealth descendant yeah. than the 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 New World on this screen. The here. New World, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Yay! So we outnumber you, right? Right. All right. So um, from my side, I, I came across this article actually a few weeks back, um, but I thought that uh, I'd, I'd bring it up um, today. Um, comparing data as being the new uh, aluminum or aluminium for us from the L world. Um, and the sort of the analogy is all about the fact that um, bauxite, which is the, the ore that um, uh, aluminium comes from, is all over the place. It's cheap. It's abundant. I mean, literally, it's over, all over the place. It looks like dirt. But you then put a lot of effort into it to smelt it and to make it into al aluminium and then it becomes really valuable right and it's in, um, infinitely um, uh, recyclable um, and it's very flexible in what what uh, what, it, what it does and this article was just sort of comparing that to data data is all over um, everywhere we look there's data right but the process that we're actually talking about is actually taking the data, extracting the value out of it for a certain use. And then that has sort of some sort of regenerative sort of similarity to, to um, aluminium. So I, I thought that was an interesting way to look at data uh, since uh, that's kind of the core subject of, of this group. So I'll throw that out for, for what it's worth. Um, and then uh, on, on the right-hand side, that's actually the uh, sheet of paper that we uh, left everybody with uh, at the the smart summit and if you think about it that's really talking about how to extract data out of buildings and sort of almost like a the recipe of making it valuable 
I know it's much more than that, but I thought the two was kind of uh, in interesting given uh, uh, last week. So I thought I'd put that up. Did you see, um, just building on that, Anto, did you see um, Salesforce.com's new commercial ad with uh, Matthew McConaughey, where he basically comes out, he's dressed in Western garb, I think. <clears throat> and he basically says, you know, if if data is, sorry, if AI is the new whatever, then data is the new all or something along those lines. So he actually, he actually he's stealing your thoughts here. Cool. I'm sure there's a commission check or something on my way. Yeah, he'll probably think it went the other way, but that's okay. Okay. Um, anyway, that's that. Um, the other news from the summit, uh, having just passed, uh, having just done a summit, is that we're heading to Tampa. Um, Rick, do you want to speak to this? Yeah, the uh, the partnership that we I think we talked about it for, or at least it came up on the stage during the summit and talked about uh, the partnership with Realcom and the uh, the developing relationship between C for SB Monday Live and and Realcom. Um, and you know that's gonna the main thing that we're shooting for right now is that um, at Realcom and pre a pre session will be on June nineteenth, where we will do um, the Smarter Summit uh, version three point I guess um, on June nineteenth for three hours um, as a pre con session. Um, we're we're excited about that for a bunch of reasons, but um, won't dive into all of them right now. But we feel like the audience that'll be part of Realcom. Um, is maybe the audience for a lot of the messages that we talk about here on Monday Live and certainly what we're doing with the coalition. Um, so we'll continue to have a relationship with AHR as well. Um, and it kind of works out pretty well, you know, winter meeting, <laughs> summer meeting, um, and have a little bit different focus for each of those. But um, st stay tuned for... What does that say? Smarter Summit 24? See, I thought we did that already. <laughs> well, it'll be a 24A. Oh, we did 23 plus one is what we did. Just uh... right. right. Even smarter summit. Yeah. 24A <laughs> and 24R. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but uh, a lot more details to figure out, but uh, we're excited about that. Um, uh, winter in Chicago, summer in Tampa. Um, something's not quite yeah. right. A bit. <laughs> we'll, make it, we'll make it work. Um, yeah. And uh, the links, I've actually updated this. So there's, um, uh, we also um, uh, released last week the Div 2525 uh, framework, the version 1.1 1 .1 of uh, of the framework. So you can you can actually find that now um, uh, available. And we also created a website, which I'm just going to quickly click into. This is the Div 2525 website. It actually has reference to the Smarter Stack and the rationale behind it and links to both the intro and the actual document itself. So much easier to get to the uh, 2525 nice. document um, if you need it. So all of that is there. Uh, at the div2525.org is the, is the address. Um, and um, before we jump into the the formal discussion, any other thoughts? Hearing none, let us proceed. So the recap, um, and you know, sort of one, one way of thinking about this is that with with any major annual trade show or sort of an in, um, industry gathering, there's always sort of a buzz that come, uh, comes out of it, typically. Um, and that's kind of one of the first questions is what is the buzz? What did we think? Was there a buzz? Wasn't there a buzz, um, et cetera. So I'm just going to put this up up here and just um, open up the conversation. Any thoughts? On, on AI, um, it seems that I didn't actually see much AI mention, like in marketing material or anything like that. It's it it it, it was obviously there, but it was not as obvious. So I, I felt there was a sort of a change in, um, in in sort of tone of discussing AI. 
Yeah, compared to the rest of the rhetoric in the society, it was pretty absent when you get right down to it uh, in our industry. Yeah, Ken was saying one of the presentations about AI was the, probably the most popular one there, wasn't it? Yeah, in terms of the presentation, I was thinking more in terms of the trade show floor okay. and uh, what people were talking about commercially. So I think there's a lot of interest in the topic, Roger, but uh, there wasn't uh, a lot of commercial spin on it yet. Well, I guess there's nothing really to show yet until someone starts uh, you know, the hype's there, but is there, there's no practical stuff out there at the moment other than you know some of the analytics that need need you know working on with with the AI. Yeah. Right. Uh, as, as John Petsy would have said, if, if he were here, uh, that there are lots of ways to do analytics and AI is one of many techniques. So I'm sure it will get its due, but uh, yeah. it's not the whole story. The the AI session that Ken that you were referring to earlier, that's I think that's the one uh, with Troy and with Keith, right? Um, yeah, that's correct. Uh, when we're doing ours, we talk about star power, and of course, like them or hate them, uh, uh, you know, passive logic has just a, an incredible amount of uh, hype that comes with them. And actually, their booth on the exhibit floor was was pretty amazing. And uh, uh, yeah, so I think that was good. I think Keith did a good job of kind of grounding it. So uh, it was a good, it was a good thing. It was. Uh, it was good, but it was good interest. I think everybody wanted to do. I think Tracy did a great job of just holding it all, kind of making it making it real. There was also another session on AI. I believe it was in the Lonmark track with um, David Knipkamp talking about his uh, implementation of AI in in their smart controllers. So that's a that's very different. That's actually um, uh, David Knip, smart, smart Controls is the company. They have a visual programming language, and what they what David's basically done is created an AI infrastructure, and basically made AI as one of the blocks that you can drag on the screen and say, "Do AI here?" Hmm. Uh, that was um, uh, standing room only. Um, it was very early on, I think Tuesday, um, but it, it got literally um, standing room only. That was David, just, David posted some comments to in the chat about passive logic and brain box um, showing showing some AI ML in it, I guess. Right. They were. They were. Hey, Greg it's just brought up an interesting point. I mean, was there much discussion around wires anywhere, or was it very prevalent on the on the show anywhere? I saw a number of controls companies uh, pushing wireless products, uh, but I didn't think that uh, uh, I didn't see any particular focus on it. I think wireless is completely mainstream now from what I can see, Roger, uh, across the industry. Okay. With and, what, Laura, why I'm becoming kind of more default? Kind uh, of it certainly is a great okay. technology. I, I didn't see people emphasizing that. I think it's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, we, we're getting a lot of feedback along that lines, Roger, that Laura Randers seems to be defaulting to the preferred. Yeah, okay. And uh, I, I read a couple of weeks back about a, um, a Wi-Fi initiative called Wi-Fi Harrow, something like that. Uh, it's basically doing Wi-Fi using the same unlicensed uh, frequency as Laura does. Oh. So you, you okay. so you basically get a kilometer to a mile kind of distance, but it's all Wi-Fi. Um, I, I I noticed that I I haven't actually seen that much um, promotion or publication about it, um, but I thought that's really very interesting because it tackles the sort of the gap between LoRa WAN and Wi-Fi and and Bluetooth. And and the the other thing that Wi-Fi is is doing is that they're coming out with Wi-Fi seven. Um, what, what is it called again? Wi-Fi Halo. Halo. Mark just posted. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think it, it there's a W in it. Halo with a W at the end of it. Something oh. it, it, it did a weird branding, right? Um, and uh, the the other thing that's going on with Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi Seven, 
and Wi-Fi 7 is actually going to be a game changer because it's it's um, it uses Wi-Fi but uses multiple channels simultaneously. Uh, so right now all Wi-Fi just uses one uh, one frequency one at a time and and Wi-Fi 7 uses all all of them whatever's available in that in that uh, jurisdiction mm. simultaneously to pass bandwidth so there's some interesting stuff in the next uh, few years from uh, Wi-Fi. So a question, I have not been there. And the th your third one down there with the work folks, I mean, was, A, was it well attended? And what was the demographics of with perhaps the boomers beginning to disappear? Is, is there a lot of the younger generation there as well now or not? Um. I didn't see any particular evidence of that. The show was very well attended, Roger. They, was, I think it set a record. It was like 65,000. Wow. Uh, yeah, so from that overall, it was well attended, but I would say the age group was pretty typical. Um, didn't view it as um, weighted, if you will, towards the younger generation necessarily. Okay. I think we were seeing, uh, I was seeing a lot a lot younger people and listen to me. And I think that was a result of us having younger speakers. Yeah. I, I think that's the secret is if you have old, old guys talking, you get old guys in the crowd. If you get young people speaking, you get younger people in the crowd. So I think I saw a shift of that. They, and you know, just after coming up and talking and there's definitely a movement. And the younger people aren't all that young either. I mean, they're just younger than us, not young. Yeah. During the uh, Smarter Summit, uh, Melissa asked uh, everyone that was uh, born uh, after 1980 to stand. And I think it uh, couldn't have been more than 20% uh, of the room. Wow. Is that about right, Anto? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, and obviously I, I was just going to comment the the summit, the, the very nature of the summit. Actually, we act, had uh, quite a number of uh, uh, younger people as part of the project, and that obviously brought that perspective in. Um, so I would say that you got the sense um, in the summit that there was there was a generational diversity, if you call it that. So is the that's an interesting question. Then, do you think there was a higher representation of younger folks at the summit versus what's at the ashray itself per se? I mean, twenty percent sounds quite a high number to me, actually. Hmm. Probably yes, but with the the margins are sure. relatively small, so uh... yeah, true. I, but, I thought yeah, that it... the trade show had generally uh, uh, not that many young people, but more in the past when you know I had once described it as a Walker convention. And uh, it's uh, it's not that bad. It's it seems to be getting a little better. Well, it's interesting because I mean, I recent stats on U.S. Um, people in employment. I think it's getting up towards seventy percent now. Are millennials and Generation X so are they just not coming into the industry or what? You know, because they should actually be coming more and more prevalent as as the major workforce. I think I've seen a bit working with Cochrane, uh, which is you know, a little different than than you guys because he's contractor orientated. Uh, definitely in their crowd, uh, like the bulk of their people are are definitely in the millennium category. Yeah, and Cochrane's always done a good job though of getting younger folks in to his org. I think that's what helped our sessions is yeah because they were they were. And and his incredible network of systems integrators. Uh, yeah, he's he's really connected that way. So it, I think that's an interesting connection, and that's it's it's great that Scott's going to be at RealCom as well as Smart Summit. So I think there's a chance of putting his jam and our jelly together. Yeah, and um, Stacks and Jules were there, obviously. Um, Quite a number of them were there. They were very supportive of with working with Phil Zito, and there was, to me, there was um, an increasing amount of discussion about workforce, even if the, the 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 demographics were not sort of showing that in the in the in the mm -hmm. attendees. There's definitely uh, people are talking about it as being 
something that everybody understands is a, is an issue and there are things melissa was obviously very vocal uh, very vocal about it in terms of how that relates to the the, the change of technology and the almost like the change of the industry is sort of um it's, it's going to be partly caused by the fact that the uh, the, the younger people are uh, now being involved so that, that was uh, the, the 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 key message right steve because you, you were with mm. on that yeah yep our on on uh to bring people into the industry was well attended and it was the first one at nine o'clock which was kind of a you know it's always a struggle to get folks out so it it kept filling in so it was it was good okay and what about energy did you have much of a profile or is it beginning to be a bit passe now to talk about energy good question roger i was literally going to ask the same one all our folks talked about it as decarbonization just a change of energy rather than energy conservation evolves to decarbonization and electrification. Yeah, um, one of my guys went to the show. I didn't make it because I wasn't silly enough to go to Chicago in the winter. Um, uh, but one of my guys went and he one of his missions was to see what was going on energy-wise, Roger. He didn't say there was a whole lot that was being talked about at the show per se. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Mark uh, on chat just talked about something called the National Warrior Workforce. What is that? Do we know what that is? Mark, could you provide a link or something? Uh, well, he'll, he'll probably do that. Well, he's doing that. One of the things that my guy did say, my, uh, Roger, was um, Honeywell apparently has a new solution they call connected power, um, which allows you to control outlets and power sources that you can manage and monitor and turn on and off. Okay. I'll make a bit of a fuss about that. And at the, the summit itself, what do you think created the the most interesting questions was it interoperability or was it the cloud native or was it just across the board or i think there was a lot of strong interest in ibb roger i think that uh there's a a certain demographic that really gets the joke and uh another <laughs> demographic that's paying close attention and doesn't quite yet uh mm -hmm. but uh i felt uh people were paying a lot of attention to ibb uh, we did. We also did a session on procurement, and I thought I was on that one. I thought it was pretty lively, but uh, I think people are are definitely trying to figure out uh, uh, how IBB uh, affects them or what it is for that matter. Okay. Thank you for the link, uh, Mark. This is interesting. Also, I don't know where anybody saw it the other day, but there was a there is a rumor or not where there was much talk about it was the fact that Johnson's may actually sell off their HVAC division. Was there much yeah. of a discussion or anything about that there? I heard some background on that as well. I'm not sure how real it is, but there is some there's there's been some groundswell on that. Yeah. What would they have left? Batteries. <laughs> Got out of that. I thought we got out of that. Well, they, they sell that off. Yeah, I thought they divested batteries and car seats some time they ago. Did. Yeah. And, you know. yeah, you're right, yeah. actually. Yeah, the, and the reason I say there's some talk about them moving out of their Milwaukee head office to one of the North campuses. Well, I mean, the headquarters is now in Ireland, isn't it? Yeah, true. They, they are, they're selling five or whatever the, the old... Uh, Downtown headquarters. That's yeah. That's been while well, they're in Glendale now, but um, yeah, we'll have to poke around at some of the rumors. Be, you know, this industry doesn't stay static for yeah ever for for too long, and it's it's been kind of boring for a little while. So <laughs> shake up. I would say that uh, um, I was thinking about just the technology. 
technology is not like a, it's a given and it kind of goes to that whole the millennials coming in expecting everything to be connected yeah i think that was on full display and you walk around the show so there wasn't outright like screaming we use ai or we use ml or everything is now <clears throat> wireless it was just more of a a subtle um given that things are going to be connected and things are going to be more appealing to the younger um, expectations. Um, and I did see a lot of, you know, every booth seemed like there was at least, you know, a young person that was um, not there just to hand out flyers or something, but actually was part of the engineering group or was part of, so maybe it was only 20%, but it did seem like there were, um, definitely young engineers and young contributors at just about every uh, every booth now i didn't i didn't spend much time on the the, the big iron but um it's it's optimistic i mean i see that as like the fact that technology is now just part of our lives so therefore it's part of our businesses and part of our products um that's noticeably different than the way things were just you know a few years ago yeah i, I was going to mention earlier that uh, the the people staffing the booths i noticed a lot more of young people there mm. maybe not in the one uh, not in the visitors and the attendees uh, so mm -hmm. much but uh, i think most booths uh, were staffed by other young people or people including the young yeah, I think you're right about that, Anto. Yeah. You know, I, um, interesting, I think we've, on um, one of the previous Monday Lives, we had talked a, a little bit about the um, the interoperability and connectivity uh, that's being achieved in home automation, right? And and how, in many, in, in arguably in many respects, it's ahead of what we're doing here for commercial buildings, um, and you know the the team I work with at at ISMA um, are our younger generation, very much so. And uh, one in particular, I was getting to know him better during the show. He's pretty he's pretty much automated his parents' house um, with all the types of things we talk about, right? Whether it's the uh, appliances, the the security, the the, the uh, temperature controls and he's able to do that um you know with with the kind of connectivity that's available in the home automation market so it, it's it's uh it just sort of reinforces in my mind that we're we're doing the right things in in advocating for ibv uh in particular as well as um both the, you know the wireless and the data interoperability uh it's just you know, it's it's a higher it's it, our our mountain is is a bigger one to climb um for sure because uh, of the, the nature of the sophistication but to the point that was made earlier in terms of the younger generation expecting it and and embracing it and just looking for it and trying to figure out and, and you know just say hey do it i mean what's the big deal this should not it, it's like they don't see this they, they don't view this as a as something that should be in their way right um it should be achievable and and so when i think when they come up against uh the obstacles that we are trying to overcome through our conversations here and our work last year and and the smarter summit it's i can under I, I can appreciate why they get fr are frustrated or disappointed in in the state of this industry um and but their expectations are that they want it and uh, because they're filling in these jobs now uh, it, just naturally they're going to be pushing their respective companies in this direction which i think is good well, you'd, you'd hope so i mean i guess the difference is Steve, that with the home automation people are more interested in selling the the commodities you know the fridge the freezer the cooker or whatever else and right um where you know our industry has been particularly slow to adopt um because a lot of it was previously you know being protective about the maintenance and you know picking up the service contract and 
Yep. You know, if it was just people selling chillers and boilers and other things, it might have been different. Um, but it's, I think, you know, it may be that um, that will speed up as we get a lot of more smaller companies selling product only rather than a combination of product and service. Mm -hmm. And the bigger so ones I, are backing off that part as well. I had the pleasure of having breakfast with Jim uh, last week. And I, I, I've shared, I think here before, but before I got into anything having to do with smart buildings, I used to build broadcast television studios. And in a broadcast television studio, um, you have your technical director who runs the switcher, which picks the cameras and sends the production feed out. And the director typically sits behind the technical director and calls the show and says, give me a two shot on camera two. Camera two person hears that over the headset, zooms in for the two shot. And then the director says, take camera two. The red light goes on on top of the camera. The camera two feed switches over to the production feed. Underneath the production feed, it now says camera two on the dally, as they call it. And... All of this happens because all these systems are integrated together. There's also a clock that keeps everything synced Synchronous. to the frame. And so you have audio that syncs, video, control, intercom, all of these different systems. And when I got into doing smart buildings, I was like, surely we should be able to do this with all the different building systems. And I, like we were talking about a few minutes ago, I was very disappointed and uh, kind of, uh, uh, it was beyond disappointment. I was kind of let down to see how, how far behind things are. But want to loop it back to the breakfast with Jim, the older I think I get, the more I see this as opportunity and a massive, massive opportunity. And instead of being depressed or um, disillusioned, I get more excited about capturing all the opportunities. And this is where I think if we can help all of the diverse generations and people in the industry to be excited about the woeful state of affairs, I think it'll be a way to help move things faster and capitalize on this massive opportunity in front of all. Couldn't agree more, and I enjoyed the breakfast, David. Did he pay? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know I'm on the hook for the next one, so it's all good. So I just wanted to jab a little thing in there on, uh, on both the younger people and the AI. On the younger people, I think Jim made that comment about the Walker crowd walking around the, uh, the sessions around the floor. When you kind of look at the cross section, most of those people own, own companies and they're there to find new ideas. And so they're not showcasing their young people. The young people are probably back uh, wherever they came from. And the other part of the AI that was is a little less visible that came up in some of our sessions is AI is being used to sort of write specifications, write code. That side of it uh, got highlighted and got a fair amount of uh, uh, attention in our, our sessions and was quite interesting. So uh, although that kind of AI isn't glitzy and changing the world, it is changing the world because writing specifications, actually doing doing the work of our industry, uh, we can replace people with AI. And uh, there, was, there was a thrust in that area. Yeah, I, I should have said, Ken, that there were, were in some of the talks, people are actually using AI, Keith Gibson is and his products and has been for some time. Uh, but what I, what I really meant to imply is, is that I didn't see a lot of, uh, of signage or messaging about AI. Uh, largely on the trade show booths, but you know we do know people. Some people are are focused on using AI in their products now. So, what about 
Office Armageddon, which we've talked about at nauseum uh, last year anyway, was that, did anybody see any kind of discussion of that at all at, in Chicago? I had some dialogues with people regarding it. I think uh, it absolutely is going to bring uh, changes to certain sectors of the industry, but uh, I'm not sure, you know, why you would have seen it because uh, uh, it's a it's a tough conversation for a lot of the folks that are entrenched in the industry to have. Anto, yeah. Any projection what that might look like at Realcom? Well, I recall the the uh, the cries at last Realcom was that 2024 is the year to get your head down and get through it, and 2025 is the earliest that things will become anything like normal, whatever that is. So, just reflect just focus on, that. on survival. Sorry. Just focus for the office buildings. Just focus on survival, trying to keep keep the doors right. open. But yeah. was was the question then? Is that being reflected in Realcom's attendance? Do you think? Is that do you think it's going to have an impact on Realcom's attendance? I don't know. That'll be an interesting metric. Yeah. I'm still I, I just I just Chicago. remember this thing: um, so, um, survive until twenty five or something like that. There's some some rhyming thing that people were saying. But the argument, you know, but the argument is they've they've still got to do something with this building stock, which is why there's a lot of retrofit refurb going on. I know there's vacant, you know, huge vacancies at the moment, but you know the people who actually own the building stock are looking to see what the hell they can do with it all. Yeah, that's true. Now, one thing about the United States and our office Armageddon here is, as a society our capitalism tends to reconfigure very, very quickly. So uh, I'm sure the bankruptcies will happen, will be on to residential conversions quite quickly. But I think that, you know, some of the things that I had with some international visitors is I, I absolutely detect a pivot. If you all remember 10 years ago or over the last 10 years, the pivot was to Asia. Large companies were even talking about moving their headquarters to Asia. And uh, right now, with the absolute real estate collapse in China, uh, I think there's an exodus of those resources. And if there's growth anywhere in the world, it's, right now it's in the Middle East, from uh, from what I hear. Uh, I don't know if anyone else picked up any of those same vibes. Well, there's certainly a move to, to India and stuff like that with manufacturing. And, but a lot of the manufacturing, of course, is coming back, Jim, which means that there will be you know, move from China back in so people get more stability because you know people move to, to China because the you know the lower labor costs, but if you you automate a factory that that doesn't cost you that much and components are pretty much globally the same and you're not incurring the shipping costs. So I think there's a, a move back to manufacturing, but there's still where it is labor intensive, perhaps yeah, India and places like this. Um, are still an opportunity. You know, the boom right now uh, in North America is uh, northern Mexico. Uh, it's uh, everyone is moving manufacturing out of Asia to northern Mexico now. So a lot going on there as well. <coughs> yeah, although actually in, in Asia we see this too. The gym is it's it's being diversified into different countries. So it's, it's happening to the, the Mexico transition is happening, but there's also a lot of stuff moving out of China to places like Vietnam and Thailand and stuff like that as well. So it's not the big central places that you recognize in Asia. It's now moving to more sort of the smaller, you know, next countries in line who are trying to pick up the, yeah. uh, the exodus. Which, so is why also factories, have, which is why factories are designed to actually be movable these days. Mm -hmm. uh, so the other topic that we haven't talked about that much is sustainability or decarbonization or climate, whatever you, whatever term you want to use. I mean, it's it was obviously dri there driving a lot of the agenda of a lot of the companies, but it 
it didn't seem to be as on the surface. What was but what was the general theme that you picked up, Anto? Was it like energy or climate or carbon or sustainability initiatives? What was the general verbiage that we're using? I'm not sure yeah. how to answer that, but I, I would say yeah. if there was nothing, there's nothing again. <laughs> Yeah, there, there was nothing uh, consistent. That's probably the way uh, The conversations I had with people were around uh, putting some substance behind the rhetoric and the metrics. Okay. I noticed that the European community is uh, coming out with a series of rules for uh, making sure that greenwashing is kept under control. So yeah. the specific conversations I had and were part of uh, were surrounding ISO 50001, you know, uh, right. which is, uh, you know, basically a uh, measurement and verification protocol around uh, uh, carbon and energy improvements. So I think people are looking at substantive uh, metrics rather than greenwashing. Uh, but I would agree with, with Anto that it wasn't a big topic. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I, I know this, this call is supposed to be, uh, we're supposed to uh, express our personal opinions. And so when I saw the big poster of the uh, uh, one of the uh, leaders at at AHR uh, about an article she's writing on on carbon, um, I was tempted. Didn't have the time, but I was tempted to try to find her and have a conversation. Say, so wouldn't it be nice in my mind if Ashray would t take uh, leadership and um, and take the absolute opposite position that this whole carbon thing is is BS. And it's time to uh, call it for what it is, as opposed to making it into a problem, which it is not. Uh, the whole notion that carbon dioxide is a pollutant and is causing global warming is there's no real proof. There's a lot of um, noise around it. Uh, but in my in my opinion, it's I would like to see an organization like HR have the courage to stand up and say this is nonsense and we're actually hurting ourselves. Uh, in so many ways, by pushing this this uh, this cult of uh, of carbon, the need to decarbonize our our world, um, I, I I I just personally think this is it's ludicrous and it's harmful, and it, we just don't have anyone with the courage to come out and, and uh, take that position. Yeah, well, I don't think Ashray would do that, though, Steve. They I've never seen Ashray stand up for anything as a message per se. I mean, they, yeah. a bit of a crowd follower. Yeah, I'm I'm not surprised to hear that, Anno. Just, but the point being, um, you know, whether you look at the farmer protests in Europe uh, or what's going on in, in this country, and where we're, you know, making this uh, into a problem where there is no problem, uh, just is it's infuriating for me. When I look at the real science behind carbon dioxide, it's just it's uh, it's amazing for me to see it all going on the way it is. But I may be in a, a minority on this phone call, so I appreciate that this is my opinion. No, I think David has a thought there for you too, Steve in the chat. Uh -huh. So, so what about the 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 exhibitors? I mean, was there much of a change in profile? Were there many people there with? Sort of cloud services or things like this now you know with space management and things or was the, the exhibitor profile pretty much the same oh that's a good question you mean is uh, you mean non-hvac or some other building services type yeah of? you know whether it's space management or you know or, yeah you know just services being provided through to the you know you obviously using us as a or our industry as a vehicle to get at the data but i just Wonder was there many sort of services applications like people present, you know, exhibiting, or was it uh, the exhibitors just the same profile as they've always been? I have to default to the latter, Roger. I did not see a lot of people uh, pushing or talking about applications that were not vertically integrated into their own products. Okay. So at, at some of the large companies, they were trying to show integrated solutions, but I I did not. You know, there were there were some, but it was uh, if if you were to restrict yourself to the uh, building automation control and showcase area, it was uh, very much business as usual. Okay. So, any other, um, David? 
you wanna you wanna speak? I'll just, I think I can just make it so you can talk. Yeah, I was That's just good. gonna. You're speaking. Well, I, as I said, I've been putting in my view. I walked the floor both north and south. I went to some of the events, um, including uh, the HVAC contractors. And uh, they're all about the IRA and how the business is going to double and electrification. So I think, as you saw, we were just a small section in energy management in one corner. But much of the other was the equipment that the ASHRAE people and the engineers have to specify. And as far as carbon and its uh, impacts, um, I can uh, say that there's proof, but I can accept Steve's position that it may not be worth doing. And I did. Uh, I will be talking about smart buildings and how it works for ESG in Baltimore in March and uh, have your handout, but um, I don't know how much about cloud native and IBB I should speak about yet, then I'll look to your advice on that. Okay, we'll gladly provide you with whatever you need on on, on IBB and 2525 and other things. So, so just to circle back to IBB, Anto, and you said there was some interest, what was, what was the was there any specific interest or was it sort of generic at this point or was there a specific angle that people were asking well i i guess there were kind of two sort of broad reactions and 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 rick was sort of alluding to this earlier for people like the the younger generation that actually understands how computing works right that sort of knows about kubernetes kind of stuff before they they would have uh, they listen to the to the pitch and they'll kind of go duh so what that sounds that sounds obvious right so that's definitely one category that we we saw over and over again and that obviously leads to a um, a, a different kind of conversation a really great conversation um, then I would say there are some people that are trying to figure it out that maybe are not uh, so familiar with sort of um, the some of the techno techno the, the concepts. Um, I think that they're the sort of minority. To me, the, the the most interesting group were the people that kind of got the concept and got the idea of what it could do to to the industry to open it up, and was basically trying to figure out how. This this IBB kind of paradigm would fit in their worldview, their commercial worldview of how they make money or whatever their business is. So to me, that was the most interesting thing. People actually think, how do I bring this in? How do I make my product um, so that it it is part of this sort of open ecosystem that it that is the IBB? So, so that that's the way I would uh, characterize the, the most interesting one. So that one, and then the first one, and then the one the ones in the middle are kind of um, for, for us less interesting for now because they'll they'll need to sort of understand over time. But those are the two contrasting things. Okay, interesting. Thanks. You're, yeah, it seemed like there was yeah there was this kind of um, attitude of okay, the IBB stands for interoperability. I like interoperability. I want to be interoperable. So to explain to me how I make you know make myself um IBB compatible, you know, whatever quote I do, um, whether it's services or whatever. And there were just kind of these matter of fact conversations about um exactly that. It's like, hey, yeah, I like interoperability. Uh, it, what what's different about the way I've been trying to do interoperability in the past versus now how well will I do it with the IBB? That was, um, that was sort of the reaction, but yeah, there were some very, um, there was definitely some interesting follow up from you know what we presented on the at the summit, and then what we did, you know, where we talked about the IBB and we're showing it in the booth. There was some very uh, immediate, <laughs> in depth conversations that ensued, which was good. Did you, 
did you um was there a demo that you did at the end for IBB or was that yeah or did Ryan yeah, there was a demo or... there was a live demo that uh, I did during the summit and then I did it on the recap of the summit as well. And then we had that demo or a variant of that demo on the booth with some some hardware that Tristan from Skycentrics had with blinky lights and a big screen and stuff like that. So th there were demo components that were being used to demonstrate all of that. Um, what did the channel or the integrators think of IBB? Yeah, so did you have any discussion with them? None that I can uh, remember right now, uh, specifically right. for HR. Um, well, Scott Cochran. I I was working, or I had a meeting with a couple, three guys from the UK, and they're building a system. Uh, their operating system is Android and OS and uh, Microsoft, so they, they're building their whole system. So they huddled when I told them about IBB and I actually introduced them to Brian Collins. And so they sat at a table and they sat there and scratched their, head, oops, scratched their heads for a while. And they kind of said, well, we're almost are an IBNB, which I think is true. So I think that's what it's done is it's kind of woke everybody up to the concept and how you're going to, what level you're going to be at it. But uh, that was, that's interesting that they, they just came out and they, we saw the, adding a cell phone to the building, they saw it as we basically write our operating system on a phone platform. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to ask you about, how did the workshop go? Did you have did your IPB it, workshop? It was, uh, it was uh, not um, highly at, uh, attended and we didn't expect um, great attendance center there anywhere on, on a Wednesday, on a, on a cold Wednesday when people would have made travels home. But we did have a, a few people turn up and we did actually have what turned out to be a really interesting conversation with those groups, right? Which is how 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 all these things tend to be. So it was good. It was a placeholder just um, to to uh, to extend the exposure of AIBB and it worked and it did what uh, it needed to do and to figure out what we're going to do um, in uh, Tampa and also in, in Orlando. Uh, next year at the HR. Not on Wednesday. <laughs> Not on Wednesday. So sure, I, I've uh, had that experience too. Some of my greatest greatest failures have been uh, epitomies and uh, epiphanies and uh, basically because we just sat down, we had the right people there. There was just not many of them, but the quality was good. So that's another yeah. another way. Cool. All right. So I think we need to wrap this. Um, somebody feel like they want to um, do a summary of what, what we've heard? Any volunteers? Rick turns off his camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pick on Roger. Since you weren't there, you were listening. What, what did I you learn wrong? From the group? I mean, if, if I'm being honest, it sounds like the summit was a success, but it sounds like the show was a little bit of same old, same over the same exhibitors, although I had you know, record attendance, seems like similar people and the exhibitors were much the same. So it seems as if it's con continuing on and that the, the industry obviously is still working. Um, there is no, the Armageddon hasn't really hit anybody yet. So I think, you know, this year could be a, a challenge to be interesting, I suppose, to see next year. But um, it, it did... It, from in my mind, you know, kind of from what you guys have been saying, it sounds as if it wasn't a lot different from what we've seen before, and it's too early for AI. Um, but you know, the, the the a few things like wireless certainly got a lot of love on our chats. Um, wireless, so maybe that's one thing that is is making some strides. Yep. And the energy as it always does seem to be when it comes up, eventually kind of dies away because the customer, it doesn't, he can't think of it really being his bottom line. And a lot of the time it's, he needs to be seen to be green as opposed to really thinking about it as being dollars on the bottom line. So. I think that's a great um, wrap up. Thank you.
Good. All right, all. We'll get the video out uh, tomorrow um, or Wednesday. Have a great week, and we'll see you um, next Monday. Uh, topic for th uh, for uh, February is um, yet to be decided. Uh, we'll communicate that out. All right. Bye, all. Okay. all right. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.